Your positive, positive, positive imprint. 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 Stories are everywhere. People, their positive action inspire positive achievements. Your PI could mean the world to you. Get ready for your positive imprint. Hello, this is Catherine, your host of the podcast, Your Positive Imprint, the variety show featuring people all over the world whose positive achievements inspire positive thought and action. Exceptional people rising to the challenge. Music by the talented Chris Knoll. Check out his music and learn more about him at chrisknoll.com. C-H-R-I-S-N-O-L-E. Fabulous music and lots of new music, too. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Your Positive Imprint. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Check out my YouTube channel, Your Positive Imprint. Visit my website, yourpositiveimprint.com, where you can sign up for podcast updates and also follow this podcast. Under the play button is a subscribe button that will take you to easy links for some podcast platforms. There is also a share button that will allow you to download the episode or click on the copy button to share the link or share the episode right to your own social media. You can also listen and follow my show from your favorite podcast platform, such as Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Amazon Music, including Alexa. Or, of course, listen from your favorite podcast platform. Please hit that subscribe or follow button now. This is a free podcast, and right now I'm running my Rise to the Challenge What's Your PI shirt campaign. You can check out my shirts from my website, yourpositiveimprint.com, and click on the merchandise menu page. Shirts come in different sizes, colors, and styles. The campaign runs through March 4th. Your Positive Imprint What's Your PI? Honey bees globally are declining for various reasons. They are one of the major contributing pollinators of our flowers and, of course, of the crops we love, such as apples, peaches, broccoli, squash, pumpkins, papaya, berries, nuts, and, oh my goodness, just so much more. It is so interesting to learn about the beekeepers around the world and how they are doing their part to protect this tiny pollinator. Today's beekeeper is Andy Friedrichs of Norway. The beehives he is responsible for are located deep in the mystic forest surrounding the Kleivstua Hotel, and something that Andy will talk more about is the Norwegian bee corridor, the country's endeavor of preserving Norway's bees. Andy is also the general manager of the hotel, and he is loaded with positive imprints and inspiring tales. (laughs) Andy, welcome. How are you today? (laughs) <laughs> Susan, Susan, Tack. I'm really good. <laughs> ah, might good, might good. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So I'm just thrilled to have found you. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah, deep there in Norway. I was seeking and searching for beekeepers all around the world. And wow, the things I've learned <laughs> about you. Amazing. So why don't we first start with your life there in Scandinavia? In Scandinavia. Like you said, right now I'm in Norway, but I'm a Dane. I uh, went to Norway for yeah, 20 years ago now, kind of educated blacksmith. My friend who was a chef up here, he needed a waiter. So I just said, yeah, I went up to Norway for a half year. One a half year went to one year and then 20 years. <laughs> so that's kind of the fast about me. Kleivstor is, is, as you said, it's a fairy tale area because the m- most famous fairy tales writer Aspians and Amo, they used to write a lot of fairy tales here at Kleivstua. So, yeah, so, so there's a lot of exciting st- stuff up here. And uh, since you talk about bees, I always want to have my own bees. And in Norway, it's really uh, many hotels, they have their own bees. But they use uh, the normal Norwegian style, the Norwegian hives, where kind of you have to interrupt the bees and, and disturb them and kind of. Every time you have to take honey, you just have to promote them to get a- aggressive. And uh, so do... can you give kind of a visual? Is that when they take the, the trays out and then? Yeah. yeah yes, so... exactly. When, when they take out the, the, the trays, like the honey, to scrap it out, then you have uh, you got the bees everywhere. 
so I think, okay, how can we make this easier? How can I kind of, with my time limit, how can I make sure the bees are in good hands? I Google a lot and then I found the, the honey flow from Australia. Kind oh, of the one by it. Cedar and Studer, Stuart Anderson? Stuart, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, his, his son, and I kind of contacted them and see, has this ever been tested in Norway? And kind of, no, kind of, I was one of the first in almost Europe who started with this project. So I bought it in and after one year, it, I finally succeeded to get the, the bees inside the hives together with the, the Norwegian bee clubs. They never believed in these, these hives. They said it, was, it wouldn't work in Norway because it was too cold. It, the honey couldn't produce any honey. It, it was just, everything was against it. But I said, I really want to try this. So uh, the owner of the hotel I'm working for, he agreed that I could buy this. And it was that time was really, really expensive. So it cost around 30,000 Norwegian crowns just to get two hives up here. But the project will get the honey. And after one and a half months, we started to could harvest the honey. What nobody believed in. And then the clubs kind of interested. They wanted to see. So every time... They have new classes. They went up to Clive to kind of to watch how it works. Because in Australia, they say that, that the bee has to do, the, do everything themselves. They have to do the vaccine. They have to kind of do everything themselves. And in Norway, you do the most for the bees. Even uh, once a year, they kill the queen. In the hives I have, the kind of the bees have to decide when and where they have to change the queen. So I had the same bee for uh, the same bee, uh, queen for almost two and a half years, and then we I couldn't find. Then I saw it was a new one. So kind of they're doing everything themselves. Uh, so it's a whole different environment in in the hives I have. I don't disturb them. I can see how they work. So it's really really interesting these uh, flow hive system because there's glass around, so you can watch inside. You can see the color of the honey and. Uh, it's really went my I sent you some pictures of my daughter as well. Like she's really interested in this B B things as well. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, and so, so part of your own philosophy obviously is to preserve the honeybees. Yeah, for me it's kind of important like 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 the bees has to have a nice environment. They have to have a, what's called the it's an animal who's kind of dying out with all the poison people are doing. So I, I'm in the club as well in Norway and kind of we all, everybody's fighting now for that the bees should have better, better environment, that the bees has, is not allowed to be hives close to the roads anymore. Like we're doing a lot to get more people to having bee hives, even the normal ones in, you have in Norway. So, so in, in Norway, it's going to be, it's, gonna, it's getting bigger and bigger with the hives. And more and more people have get eyes open for the flow hive, what I have up here. Yeah, again, it takes time to get the bees, the Norwegian bees kind of to learn these new system. But with time, it works. And I think in, in a couple of years, there'll be so much more bees in Norway and, and everywhere. That's so interesting because Norway does have a very different climate because mm -hmm. you are so far north. What are the ways that you keep them during the winter so that they don't die off. I know. I, that was kind of one of my big concerns as well when I started, because it can be up to 30 minus degrees where we have our hotel. But in Denmark, you have some, when you build some small playhouses for the ch children, we use some uh, thin plates, kind of isolate plates, kind of. And one of my, my uh, colleagues here at the hotel to build two houses so I can put over the hives, so they are totally isolated. And it has been succeeded until now. Sadly, last year, I lost uh, a lot of bees because the ants, they found the way to, to, to my hives and they kind of attacked the, the bees. And again, that's kind of the nature. And instead of kind of trying to get rid of the ants, I just moved my two hives to another place where I couldn't see any ants. So, so. I hope like this year should be really good honey again for, for the guests at our hotel. Awesome. Now, Norway, I've been reading quite a bit about the, the bees in Norway. First of all, do you know what species of, is it called the Norwegian honeybee? 
It's, it's, yeah, it's a traditional honeybee. I had the same species now since I started in 2016 with them. Okay. They said like more and more bees are kind of dying out because, yeah, again, you have uh, some people put it too close to the road. Some people poison the, the fields where you have some corn or fruit, apples. Sadly, before in time, many people kind of didn't took to thinking about the the environment around them so but now in norway at least the area we are living in more and more people are getting some money for the from the government to take more care of the environment and change the whole harvesting uh harvesting things like like in, in Slo's a lot of middle of the if you think middle of the Oslo city they have been starting to have beehives on the roofs now with the make kind of some big forests but again we are not allowed to take any bees from oslo I'm only allowed to kind of getting bees from my area. So we don't, we're not allowed to mix to just to get the, because a lot of, again, a lot of bees and they shouldn't get mixed. So I, if I have to buy bees from a new beekeeper in Oslo or anywhere else in Oslo, or in Norway, I have to have the right papers, kind of almost like buying a dog. You need a lot of papers to get the right queen. So they really, really, <laughs> it has to really follow the book if you have to, if you are in the club. Not you can't just buy anything anymore. Oh, that is I think so interesting. I think it's a really good thing as well because yeah, like the bees are the, one of the most important animals, or the insects in the world. Absolutely, what they have, like they pollinate what eighty mm. percent of our food sources. So, and we're still using pesticides. So, yeah, things have to change, and I, I'm thrilled to hear your obviously your philosophy of the protection of the bees so you're also growing some of your own crops which of course takes the bees to pollinate them mm -hmm. so you're working together to keep this hotel restaurant open basically is the bees and you so go ahead and take it from wherever you want <laughs> <laughs> no like um like with the with the guests we are not we are trying to use some for the guests but mostly it's just to show the guests that how easy it is to to produce honey we are trying to use some for the food but again i only have two hives it's mostly just to show people that it's we have to kind of to look at the environment we have to take care of of things around us and uh, people are really interested and some guests we have uh, who's eating they want to join me up to the hives they're watching and i have uh, like it's People are getting more open their eyes. I have people from all from Norway calling me and just to come and watch how the hives are doing. And so, so it's more like a taste for the people. We have a, a lot of a kind of forest around us. So we have our own vegetables and, and we have a lot of uh, kind of make sure that we have these bushes with berries, like raspberries especially. And we have a lot of flowers we going around and make sure they are alive all the time when we have the season for the bees. So, so we're trying to kind of have everything around us to be a good environment for the bees. So kind of the whole concept with the bees is, is for, for me, who is really, I think it's a it's really nice experience. It's, a, it's, it's, it's really good. Like, and people are getting more and more interested. So I have bee clubs from the whole Norway kind of there want to call me to, to see because they want to have this new upset with the honey flow. And again, until now, I haven't heard about anybody else who has succeeded with that. So, so, so we are kind of thinking that's because they are in the forest. And that's the first time ever there have been any hives in the forest up here and where we are living. They've never been before. So I think that the flow, honey flow is, is that's the future. It's, you're not disturbing anybody, any bees. They are just flying around while you are harvesting their, their honey. Like they won't even, they won't even notice it. And that's kind of the concept we are doing up here. Kind of, we like we have our own our own honey. We have our own beer, agavit. Like we're doing a lot of stuff ourselves, and that's the whole concept. Kind of, we are showing people that you can do a lot by yourself to help people and uh, around you. So, kind of the beer we're using, the small local brewery to survive, and then with our recipe, like the whole concept, it's just helping the nature, helping the the people we are living with. So you're the, an educational advocate, obviously, for the environment, <laughs> for sure. Did you, growing up, did you, were you active in 
in your backyard, in learning and understanding the environment around you? Kind of, no. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I was the opposite. But, but when I got my daughter, uh, she's 13 years old now, she kind of was a wake-up call for me. And, and uh, yeah, the, the, I start to see the nature first then, like kind of walking long trips with her in the wagon, like seeing the small stuff you haven't seen before. So, so now that's why she's so, she's so active as well. She's kind of a part of everything I'm doing with the, with the, the bees and then more and more kids in the area around, they're really now into to bees and the parents are starting with their own honey and yeah, by backyard. And, and so it's more and more now where I'm active with all this environment and, and so kind of a bit of a big wake up call when, for 13 years ago, when I started walking outside with my daughter. <laughs> so why the bees? I mean, there's so many, I mean, what gave you this idea? Because if, if you weren't, you know, active as a youngster in your backyard, then something must have inspired you to discover the bees. Was well, kind of two things. My really, really good uh, childhood friend who lives in the, the States, in Los Angeles, uh, he told me a lot about how, how bad the bees are in the States, that so many is dying, that they everything. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, as I told you, I really want to have my own bees, like my own hives up here. And I didn't want to have a traditional. I want to be different like everybody else. So that's why we started with the honey flow. I'm not a 100% educated beekeeper. But I still want my own bees and to have the, these bees, I want to make sure they, they are healthy and they wouldn't suffer, like they wouldn't die for me after one week. So it took me many phone, to to phone calls to the Australia where I talked to the people there and how I'm, they should guarantee me that, that they would survive in Norway and they couldn't. And then I started to talk to the beekeepers in Norway and they were just laughing at me like, so... Mm -hmm why i'm going for this now and the owner he said yeah go for it we will pay but i know the club i'm in they they have, they have applied for uh, for the flow hives now to their club to harvesting together with the norwegian hives where you have to disturb my the hives we have here that you can harvest them twice so up to three times if it's a good season so the bees are really really strong bees in these hives so, so I, I can see the big difference. So the honey, they were in the Norwegian championship in honey, Flun honey in 2018, I think. They were nominated, the honey here. But sadly, it didn't win. Yeah. But. yeah. <laughs> well, you're, these positive imprints just are coming from all over the place to help inspire others just you know, for the bees, for the honey. And I think that's incredible. And what I find even more incredible is that you went to the owner of the hotel there and you <laughs> had this idea of not producing a whole bunch of honey for the hotel, but the whole part about education and environmental advocacy so that people can see and taste the honey and, and go back to their own homes and hope that they'll protect the bees. Not so much that they're going to go and do their own beehive, but to protect the bees. And so then they become a voice for the bees. And so your voice is just becoming global now as people leave your hotel and head back to their own homes, whether that be in Australia, United States, South Africa, Western Africa, wherever it may be, because obviously you're an international hotel. So this, this is, have you thought about the, the absolute positive imprint that you're making with just that? Kind of not, uh, <laughs> because for, for me, it's just like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a hobby. It's a, and I just want the best for, for the environment I'm in and where kind of my kid is, is living now. And she has to live for hopefully many, 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 many years uh, right, right. after me. And that's kind of the wake up call I got because, uh, yeah, when I see all the dirt in the, the road and yeah, I, I just so. So that's why I'm really fighting for this bee and I'm kind of using more and more time with it and uh, people 
who want to see I'm taking me time to it to show them and and yeah so so and again the, my, all my colleagues they're they're part of it now they think it's a funny thing and they love the honey and they're joining me to check to them they're joining me when I have to put them in the winter sleep like winter hive where we have to give them extra food kind of the, more and more people are coming up and see and so so I th I think it's um yeah I think what I'm doing what we are doing here at Clive Store is, is, is it's a good thing for the environment. And, and I hope more people will do it by time, if not soon. And that's so commendable with what you're doing. And I know from what I've read that your hotel, where you're at, you're really working hard to become a very self-producing as far as some of the foods and also organic and mm -hmm. That again is commendable, and and the positive imprint of the owner of the hotel certainly is commendable. So, what are some of the things you know? If you could expand on on what you're doing there at the hotel, and kind of talk a little bit about what you're doing, and and inspire others so that they can look forward to doing the same. Like the things we're doing here is kind of the chefs at least once a week, one of them. If we have time, all the chefs, all six chefs are going inside the forest right next to us where they're collecting like berries, uh, mushrooms, like everything what's eatable in the woods. And we take it back and use it in the, in the food we are making here. And all the guests who uh, get served the food, they get explained what they have and how we collect them and uh, how much time kind of to to. I think it's very important that people know that so much nice food in, in the forest, what you can eat and and do it in a nice time when you're outside anyway. We have a close, we're working close together with a lot of farms in the area where we're getting, where we're uh, delivering our own apples from private gardens we have around where we are living. So we collect all my apples and the chef's apples and the uh, washing latest apples, what they have in the garden from the trees. And we're putting everything together and make our own apple juice, what we're uh, selling to the guests. So we're kind of trying to use everything what's eatable from the nature, even as our private stuff, whatever we, we can do. We have, we're have making our own sausage, where we're buying meat from animals, from farmers who, who we know treated their animals very well, where we buy it from there. It's a little more expensive, but our guests they they will pay they're paying a lot of money so they know because they know that the food they have is 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 first class like the animal maybe you take the cow the cow has had a really nice life no stress so kind of everything is thought through that that's what we're doing here and the owner like Clivesto is a place from 1780 780 where it usually get built when the owner bought it in 96, 1996, everything was falling apart. So instead of r r taking everything down and build a new hotel, he rebuilt the old buildings in original standards just to keep the, the environment that it's uh, kind of the, the old wood, the old floor, the walls, everything is original still. Just to, and he's, yeah, just to kind of have everything in the nature, like, and what that's kind of the concept with everything again with the bees with the cows with the forest with the food with the trips we're doing the horse riding yeah everything kind of the concept is is it's kind of difficult to explain you kind of just have to see it so so i wish you just come to norway i could show you everything because there's so much to show and so kind of difficult to talk about everything because it's a lot what we're doing and a lot of guests doesn't even notice what we're doing uh, because there's so many small things who is going into everything. Well, I know that you have lots to say about uh, the bees and other things. And what kind of inspirational words do you have that you'd like to share with the listeners? Like it's kind of take care of the nature because without that, we can't live. The bees for me is a good example i can just see how many f extra flowers we get have have gotten after after we started the hives so don't take the bees what they call uh, for for granted they're really really important insects and yeah be be happy <laughs> <laughs> andy you're really delightful i 
so much enjoy hearing what you're doing over there in the high forests or the deep, very mysterious forests and beautiful forests out there uh, in Norway and the endeavors. Oh, you're going to take us on a I'll, tour. <laughs> I'll, I'll just show you outside so you can see how much snow it's right now. Oh, we would uh, love to see this. <laughs> I just have to put my shoes on first. Oh, my. <laughs> so that's kind of yeah. a lot of snow right now here in Norway. It's beautiful. So that's uh, kind of the hotel we're living at now, uh, where I am now. And the bees, they are far behind up there. Well, it's a lot more snow now. This is beautiful. So it looks like the rooms are, uh, are um, not part of one building, but they're separate buildings. And many small buildings around where we have conference rooms and the staying rooms. We have 42 rooms, a space for 100 people and eating. We can have uh, 200 people in the restaurant. Wow. I can see if you can go outside here and you can see the view because this is the Queen's view. Because the Kleist was built after three royalties. We have the King's view. We were here in uh, 1832. Oh my goodness. And, uh, so that hotel has been there or the building has been there a long the time. The building has from 1780. I can t tell you the whole story about Kleist the first, of course. Uh, yes. The first one. Yes. Um, as a Kleist original is built in 1780 and the reason Kleifstor get built is because it was uh, a, a pit stop between the old road who went from from Bergen to Stavanger in Norway. This road is 1.4 kilometers up the hill, really going straight up. The car uh, road now is five kilometers. So that's why they built Clive, so people can get inside, get some food. Uh, the horses can get some rest before they move into the forest or down, to, down the hill. In 1810, they kind of changed the concept and to be a more uh, like a, a, a call, not a pub, but a, a dining place where you can get better food. And it's also there when the royalty first was a Queen uh, Desiree. She went to Kleifstua, and that's why we have the view from the restaurant. It's meant called after her. She were here in 1825. It was kind of the same time where the most famous uh, fairy tales writer, Asbjørnsen and Mo in Norway, they had success with all the fairy tales. So they have been reading a lot of fairy tales here at Kleifstua about the area and everything. And that's why all the hotels rooms, it's not numbers, that's fairy tales. So if you go to one, one of our rooms, they, it's, um, you can go to Westen Formone. It's the room's name. Or we don't have numbers. We have fairy tale names. Oh, that's cool. And then around 10 years later, we had the King Karl Johan in 1832. He went here and uh, he get uh, nice food here. And then they did, went up to the King's View. It's around two kilo, at 1.5 kilometers from Kleifstua. It's a really, really nice view from there. And we actually have a really nice picture of it where you kind of can see the view and what you can see. Because that's kind of the most famous view in, in the Oslo. We have it right there. That's the view. Oh, wow. So you can see that's called after him where you can see the whole area. Far, far. So that's from 1832. And then Kleifstu again, in the, this area, this was in the many years forward, we had then the owner. They were the first who built a transport lift for, for people, like uh, not a ski lift, but a person, a people lift for tourists. And they built that in 48. That was the first one in Scandinavia up here so that was a chair where people are sitting it could be two people one kid and not yeah it took a cost of three three crowns and the first year in 48 they earned 60,000 Norwegian crowns just on transporting people up and down oh. 
it has been a health like a vegan and a vegan center here as well but the the lady who had that she went broke and then that's why what that's when Clivesdor the owner of Clivesdor bought it now and changed the whole concept to conference uh, place restaurant conference place or wedding place so it's just a fast story about the, the views but the last viewpoint that's the newest and that's from Prince Hokon the Norwegian prince he jumped uh, paragliding in 1992 and that was kind of his one of his last jump because he was forbidden to jump because they saw it as an extreme sport and a royalty wasn't allowed to do these kind of hobbies so that's the kind of the last view means of him is around 500 meters from Clive's as well so we have three views around us and people from the whole area are kind of coming to 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 see these uh, views wow well i can't wait to get up to Kleipstuhe for sure <laughs> you have to come have some nice traveling shoes and then come uh, yeah <laughs> for sure i'm really lucky that that we are living in, in norway because the, the the COVID is really low in norway so so yeah so in denmark it's really high they, they have lockdown now in denmark and then in norway kind of there's not a lockdown, but um, it's not allowed to have so many people together. But uh, we're still opening, but it's a low, low poison here still. So yeah. if you're lucky, it's maybe only 100 people a day who's getting sick. So Yeah, so, well, uh, just stay safe. But... It's a ter- terrible, terrible thing. But um, like, I think we're on the way to, to hopefully to, to overwin this. Oh, this, uh, we definitely are. Poison. We have great scientists, great virologists great medical teams out there. Absolutely. Andy, this has just been so wonderful having you here on the show. And I absolutely love the inspirational words that you have and the outlook, the very positive outlook you have for the future of our planet and with the work that you're doing with the honeybees. I thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to close with this quote from Elizabeth Lawrence, the hum of bees is the voice of the garden. And Andy, you have a beautiful garden. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So thank you again from a person from Copenhagen, Kubenhavn, Denmark, who went over to Norway to be a waiter, found a love in this mysterious forest where you have found your positive imprints. And thank you for sharing them. Thank you to be here. Nice to chat with you. Yeah, yeah. Your positive imprint. What's your PI? Your PI could mean the world to you. Positive action to inspire positive achievements. Hit the positive button. Subscribe now. Go to yourpositiveimprint.com. What's your PI?